on the dotted line. Let's fill the doubt for your freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America! Exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. Congress has lied to us long enough. Think of all we've sacrificed to win this war. I fought six years and not a penny. The time has come to take matters into our own hands. Without justice, the army is a powder keg ready to explode. And right now, I have no idea how to prevent it. Dear Moses, I write you today with monumental news. Forgive me if it's not in my own hand, but my gout's been acting up again. Yesterday, November 30th, we signed a preliminary peace treaty with Great Britain. John Adams, John Jay, Henry Lawrence, and yours truly signed the document at the Grand Hotel Muscovite in Paris. For some reason, the King's emissary, Richard Oswald, didn't seem nearly as pleased as we were. Liberty is ours, though one troubling question remains. We've won our war, but can our new nation survive in peace? Dr. Franklin, forgive me for interrupting, but I'm in an absolute state. The British ministers refuse to let me paint them signing the peace treaty. I won't be able to finish. Look at it this way, Mr. West. You must abandon a painting. The British must abandon a country. Dr. Franklin, your legs. They're still strong enough to kick King George across an ocean. Manners? Wait for me. Sorry, it just smells so good. I wish Dr. Franklin were here to enjoy this with us. Me too. Can you pass the beans? And Moses as well. Oui, and he sure likes turkey. Could I have a drumstick? And James. It's been forever since we've seen him. Nobody can eat like James. Uh, you going to have some of those yams? Sarah, Henri, working on a story. General Washington, Army, Congress, you have to come with me. Oh, I'm sorry. You're eating. Forget eating. This sounds exciting. Besides, we hadn't really started yet, had we, Henri? Uh, uh, no. So what's this about a story? It can wait. I haven't eaten all day. But we haven't seen you in months. And you can't just leave us hanging. Yeah, we are journalists too. Okay, okay. What if I told you General Washington could have had the chance to become King of America? If he had to become a king, then I am the Prince of France. I don't understand. Didn't he fight to get rid of a king? I'd better start at the beginning. Remember how I went to visit General Washington and the Continental Army? The British Army still occupied New York City, 
But news had come from France that the war was all but over. Whoa, Caesar. Time to eat. It's not right! We've got to do something. We're being cheated! It was Major General Horatio Gates and some of General Washington's highest ranking officers. I thought I'd go over and say hello. Gentlemen, Congress has lied to us long enough. Think of all we've sacrificed to win this war. And now that freedom is in our grasp, what has Congress done? It's broken every promise it's ever made, that's what. Has any man here been paid so much as a farthing by Congress? I thought six years and not a penny. Congress promised us all pay. Then it promised us a pension for life. Now it wants to discharge us without giving us either. Did we serve our country just to lose our property and end up in debtor's jail? We must demand our rights. If Congress refuses, I say we march down to Philadelphia and answer them with muskets. Where does His Excellency stand on the matter? Where does Washington stand? He cannot speak publicly on the matter, but I assure you, we have his support. Why else would he allow us to meet tomorrow? Read this, circulate it to bring more men to our cause, then meet at the new building tomorrow at noon. The time has come to take matters into our own hands. If you have sense enough to discover, and spirit to oppose tyranny, whatever garb it may assume, awake to your situation. If the present moment be lost, your threats hereafter will be empty. What they were talking about sounds like armed rebellion. It's, it's mutiny. This is the second such letter to be circulated amongst my officers. I ordered them to postpone their meeting, hoping they would reconsider. Obviously, they have not. If you ask me, they're no better than traitors. On the contrary, James, I consider them heroes and patriots of the highest order. They risked their lives to fight for a new form of government. And now they feel that government's turned its back on them. But what they've said about Congress... Comes from honest frustration. They haven't been paid, and there's little chance they will be. But why? The National Treasury has no money. Congress has no power to raise taxes. And the states can't pay what they promised to. The simple truth is that without a strong central government, our republic cannot survive. I heard one of the officers say that you would support an armed uprising on Congress. Is that true? There's something I'd like you to see. This was sent to me by one of my officers not very long ago. He's asking you to become king of the United States. He's saying the army would stand behind you. Have you ever heard of Caesar? Um, that's the name of Dr. Franklin's horse. Julius Caesar was a great general and the most popular man in Rome. After winning a war, he marched his army into Rome and made himself king? and made himself king. I don't believe it. George Washington would never declare himself king. Never! Would he? Of course not. Anyone with half a brain knows George Washington would never do a thing like that. You'd never declare yourself king. Would you? No, James. The very idea is abhorrent to me. To say nothing of the fact that neither the American people nor the vast majority of soldiers would stand for it. The army exists to serve Congress, not the other way around. I thought everything would be fine once the war was over. Now it seems like things are worse than ever. Without justice, the army is a powder keg ready to explode. 
right now, I have no idea how to prevent it. James Madison, delegate from Virginia, now has the floor. Gentlemen of Congress, we have no power to act. We have failed to live up to our promises. Now, General Washington warns of an armed uprising against us. No, armed uprising? Outrageous! Who are these men? This must not stand! The army shall not rule. If we do not find some means to pay these honorable men, God only knows what will happen next. at the meeting hall. I've been composing my speech. It will be the most important one I'll ever make. I only hope it doesn't fall on deaf ears. I'd be willing to listen, if you'd like to rehearse it. Hmm, perhaps that's not a bad idea. You wear glasses? Sir? I've kept it a secret. It's not something a commanding officer wants his men to see, unless... I've got to get over to the new building. But what about rehearsing your speech? I just realized that what I say is far less important than how I say it. Gentlemen, we are gathered here today to make a decision. Shall we stand down and receive nothing for our efforts, or shall we rise up and force Congress to give us satisfaction? With your permission, General, I would like to address the officers. Oh, we'd be honored, Your Excellency. Gentlemen, I am well aware of your concerns and have written to Congress requesting a fair settlement. I ask you to be patient. Why should we? We've waited long enough. Shh! Let him speak! I also ask you to remember all we've been through together. The hardships at Valley Forge. Our victories at Trenton and Princeton. Think of our brothers in arms who sacrificed their lives for liberty. Do you really want to turn your backs on them? Make no mistake. I'm proud of each of you. And because I am, I'll do everything in my power to prevent you from disgracing your previous glory. One moment. Gentlemen, will you permit me to put on my spectacles? I don't believe it. I had no idea. His Excellency wears eyeglasses? I have grown gray in your service, and now I am growing blind. He 
stopped a rebellion just by putting on his eyeglasses? They had sacrificed a lot for their country. But when they saw how much Washington had sacrificed for them... What happened to their rebellion against Congress? It ended right there. Washington walked out, and the officers voted unanimously to reject any acts of violence. In fact, they agreed to let Washington work out a fair payment for them from Congress. Did he? Full pay for five years. It sounds like they would have followed him to the ends of the earth. They didn't have to go that far. King George gave his blessing to the peace treaty, and General Sir Guy Carleton and the British Army evacuated New York City once and for all. The Americans want their own country so badly. Well, they can have it. Julius Caesar made himself a dictator. But you know what George Washington did? He invited all his officers to Francis Tavern and said goodbye. I have looked upon each and every one of you as a member of my family. And I wish that your future days will be as prosperous and happy as your former ones have been glorious and honorable. Yeah! You know what I'm going to put in my story? Washington was strong in war, but even stronger in peace. Were you really there at the tavern? This is the mug General Washington used to toast his men. I told Mr. Francis, the tavern keeper, that I wanted to give it to Dr. Franklin. Hmm. I declare that no one will ever be allowed to wash this mug. What did General Washington do after saying goodbye to his officers? I almost forgot. That's what I came here to tell you. He's gone to Maryland to address Congress. We may still be able to get there in time to see for ourselves. That is, if you're interested. I wouldn't miss it for the world! Gentlemen of Congress, I've come here today to thank you for your faith in me and to surrender to your hands the trust you placed in me. When I accepted my commission, I was afraid I wouldn't be able to live up to your expectations. But I gained confidence from knowing that our cause was just. If I may, I'd like to speak of the debt I owe to the army and in particular to the members of my staff. A better group of men does not exist anywhere. I am fortunate to have served with each and every one of them. <clears throat> Gentlemen, it is with a heavy heart that I offer back my commission. My work is done, and now I look forward to retiring from the great theater of action. I came in here a general. I shall leave a private citizen. Washington, sir? Um, can I still call you that? I don't see why not, James. Where are you going now? Oh, I have a farm that needs tending to. The war 
is really over. It's over! Huzzah! It's over! that the American General Washington has resigned his commission and returned to private life. Come here. The country could have been his for the taking. I believe it to be true, Your Majesty. He's returned to the life of a farmer. If it is true, then George Washington is the greatest man alive. Does it look all right, sir? The dove of peace, exactly as I saw it in my dream. If anybody needs me, I'll be surveying the orchards. Yeah. Yeah! <laughs>